Hi all, this is the badging video for our Necky sewing machines here at Week Haven. So we're just going to show you how to thread them, how to wind the bobbin, and then the basics on how to use them. So they have covers, make sure to put the covers back on when you're done so that the dust doesn't get on them. And we're going to look at some of the basic parts first. The power switch is over on this side, on the right side. Uh, so we'll turn that on when we're ready to sew. There's a foot pedal down here that controls the speed of how fast the machine goes. There's a hand uh, wheel here, so you can use this instead of the motor. You always turn it towards you. There's little arrows on top in case you forget. On this machine, you always turn it towards you. This is what's called a portable machine instead of an industrial machine. And this machine has a bunch of different things that it can do. Um, here, this is the straight setting. So this is just gonna stitch in straight lines. And then we can move it over to here, which starts at straight, but can also do zigzags. And so for that, we would also control the width in addition to the length of the stitches. So then a combination of this selector and this selector will tell you which of these things it's gonna do. Most of these, you're never gonna use. Um, you would probably use the embroidery machine if you wanted to do any of these things. Realistically, you're probably gonna be doing a straight or a zigzag stitch. All of those are under A, so we're just leaving the selector at A. And then here, if we wanna do a straight stitch, we leave it here. And if we wanna do a zigzag, then we move it over. The length of the stitch, which is to say the distance between each stitch as the needle moves along is controlled here. Uh, it's just zero, which would be maybe just sewing in spot, in one spot, like for a button or something, up to four, which is, which is pretty long. Then over here, we have the reverse. So when you hold this down while you're holding it, it will go backwards. You'll see we'll use that for back stitching when we're trying to lock our stitches at the end of a line of stitching. Back to this knob. If you want to increase the width of your zigzag, then you would just increase this guy, but we're going to leave it down here. Well, in fact, we're just going to do straight. Uh, this is the tension wheel. This is how the tension works on this particular sewing machine. That when you're sewing, it's interlocking this upper top thread with a bottom thread that's held in a bobbin underneath. And the goal is while those threads are interlocking, there's this top one and the bottom one, for them to be pulling against each other with equal tension. If the top one is pulling harder, if this was turned too high and the bottom is too low, then you would see your bobbin thread pulling through to the top. And conversely, if this was too low or the bottom was too high, then that top thread would get pulled all the way down and that top thread would be visible on the bottom. But the goal is for those to meet right in the middle and for each of your respective top and bottom threads to only be visible on their side. So generally we can just leave the tension alone, but that is what you're going for if you do need to adjust it. And there's more instructions down here and in the manual in case you do need to adjust that tension. So first I'm gonna show you how we get the top of the machine set up. So we're going to pretend this isn't already threaded. So we're gonna pull this out. We have a bunch of different threads available. Uh, in the thread rack, but if you wanted a particular thread or you're doing a lot of sewing in one color, then I would recommend that you buy your own. There are, there are also a lot of different kinds of thread, so you can get, you know, whatever thread is appropriate for your project. You can learn more about that by talking to facilitators or looking online. But do make sure to use sewing machine thread and not embroidery thread or hand sewing thread. So I'm going to wind this up and then I'm gonna just put it here for now. Um, and we're gonna pull the bobbin out. So I told you we were gonna set the top of the machine up first, which we will, but actually first we need to wind the bobbin. Um, so we kind of have to do both at the same time. So down here, you can see this is the bobbin case and we're gonna pull this little lever to open this up. Our bobbin comes out, our bobbin case comes out and our bobbin is inside of here. We're gonna pop this out just like that. And you can see our wound bobbin. So I'm gonna wind up another bobbin a little bit for you just to demonstrate how that works, but this one's already wound up just fine. Um, so let's see. 
In this box are some accessories for the Neki. Uh, make sure to put the things back where you found them. This looks like a bit of a mishmash in here. Uh, but I'm going to look for an empty bobbin. And there's actually a case of them right here. So we're going to wind this bobbin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind it with a different color thread so that you can see the different threads when we're sewing. So I'm going to grab this blue thread here. Maybe blue and purple aren't the most different colors, but should do the trick. We're going to put our bobbin right on here. Now keep in mind that there are different bobbins for different machines. So make sure that you use the one that fits into the bobbin case for this machine. Uh, there are other bobbins that live right down here. So here are the sewing machine accessories, and there's a whole case of bobbins that are pre-wound with various colors. So you can take them from here. This is marked for the Neki. Uh, there's also other accessories here that you should talk to a facilitator about using. For example, different feet that we will, you know, we'll look at what the feet are. So back to winding a bobbin. We are going to take this and put it through this little loop. And again, you'll go over all this with the facilitator and you can see it in uh, the manual and down here on the table. So it just goes through this little tensioner and we're gonna put it through this hole so it doesn't come undone. Okay. All right, so here we are. We pulled it through that little hole and then this just pops over and it's, the thread is gonna push against this. And when it's done, it'll stop itself or we can stop it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the machine on and we're gonna loosen this so that the machine isn't going. So normally you can just loosen this up and what that does is it disengages the motor from the needle side so that when you're winding the bobbin, it isn't also uh, putting the needle up and down. This one is a little stuck, the other one works fine but it doesn't matter too much. We already took the bobbin out anyways, but that's how it should work is you should be able to loosen this and then we'll fix it. So hopefully in the future that'll work, but it doesn't really matter that much anyways. So this is pushed in and I'm going to start by slowly pushing the pedal. I'm going to hold this so it doesn't get pulled out. And you can see this bobbin filling up the thread. And because this is just a demonstration, I think that's probably enough for what we're doing. But normally, this it would it would pop itself out when that's full of thread. So we'll take that off. I'm going to use these these little snips to cut that off. Take our new bobbin, remove this thread, and we'll put that back on the thread rack. So we are not leaving a mess, and we're leaving the space just how we found it. So we'll take you our new bobbin. We're gonna put it in the bobbin case, just like that. And then it goes through this little crack, just right there, under this plate, and it clicks right there. So it comes out of this hole. So just how we saw, you can adjust the upper tension with this knob. On the bobbin side, you would adjust it with this little screw. So if in the unlikely event, you needed to adjust the lower bobbin tension, that is how you would do it, but hopefully it'll work just fine. Most, most of the time, it doesn't need adjusting. All right, so then to reinsert this bobbin case, we're leaving this tail hanging out. We're going to pull, pull this lever out and put it in with this handle pointed up. It'll only go in in that orientation. So it clicks in, and then it's, it's in there nicely. All right, we're gonna close this case just like that and we're gonna thread our purple thread from the top. So I'm putting you in here, and here they're nicely numbered. One, and then two, we're, we're skipping this because that was just for threading the bobbin. Coming down behind this plate, and then three, and four. I'll raise this up a little bit so you can see it better. It's just going through that little hook. Then down under five, six, and this, this will just take some practice, but you'll get the hang of it. Seven, and actually before I put that in, before I put it through the needle, I'm just gonna show you that the way you would remove the needle is by loosening this and the needle drops out. So I'm gonna show you a few things about the needle. So 
this needle actually it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt to replace it because the tip is a little bit dinged up but this is a sharp tip needle which is normally meant for woven uh, fabric so non-stretch woven fabric um, and its sharp point will go right through the fabric nicely if you were using a knit or a stretch fabric then you would try to use a ballpoint often um, you don't need to be too obsessive about it. If the sewing machine isn't working well, it could be because of the kind of needle. And then there's a little bin with different kinds of sewing machine needles. And so you could swap it out. When you're putting it in, there's this flat side. And that flat side goes towards the back on these portable sewing machines. So you put it in going towards the back. And there's it might be hard to see in the camera, but there's this little scarf, that little flat section that also goes towards the back. And that's just where the thread can kind of push up against. So we're gonna put you right back in, making sure that it goes all the way up. And then we're gonna retighten you. And I'm gonna put this thread. Now some people say to moisten the, the thread, some people say not to. I think it's helpful. Um, so I just moisten the tips of my fingers to do that. You can also use the scissors to, to get a nice sharp, to get a nice sharp tip on it. <laughs> Come on. Just like that. All right, so now we can put it through the needle. And this is just a little bit of a game, but just like that, we get it through the needle. And then loop it through the foot. That's kind of the last one is putting it through the foot there. And then while we're down looking here, I'll just show you that this foot is removable. So there's a screw on the side here. So you could swap out this foot with a different foot if you wanted to. There's these little, those serrated grippy things. Those are the dogs and those pull your fabric through. So this isn't a walking foot like the sail, right? Uh, but it does have some ability to pull the bottom of your fabric through. And then this lever here in the back, this raises and drops the foot, the presser foot. So right now we wanna leave it up. And this actually controls the pressure of that foot. Um, generally you don't need to move that. So you can just leave that where it is. So the last step is we wanna get this bobbin thread up to the top. And I'm just gonna open this so you can see exactly what's happening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the hand wheel towards me. And this purple thread is gonna come down and get caught here. And then it loops around. And now by pulling the purple thread, we pull this blue thread up. So now we have both of our threads up at the top. We're gonna loop them backwards through that presser foot and close the bottom. And now we're ready to sew. All right, so our bobbin is threaded. Our top thread through the needle is threaded. This is closed and we're gonna put this back on. The purpose of this guy removing is so that if you were trying to sew inside the hem of a leg of pants or something, you have a now smaller thing that you can slide your work piece around. But if you're just doing something flat, then you can put this right back on the machine like that to have a nice work surface. So I grabbed this piece of woven fabric, sort of like a mid-weight fabric, and I'm just going to demonstrate stitching on it. If you were trying to do a hem, I would recommend folding it and then on an ironing table or the pressing table, using an iron to flatten that hem so it's easier to sew. But we're just going to fold it in half like this to make our stitches. And we're going to put it on here. And I'm going to use the lever in the back to drop that foot down. And then I'm going to hold these threads. And when you're sewing, the machine is going to move the fabric, but it doesn't hurt to help it a little bit. So I'm going to have my foot on the back. And now with my foot on the pedal, so I'm, I'm holding these threads and I'm holding the fabric and I'm going to push the pedal. And you can see we're making a nice straight stitch. And that's with a stitch length of two. So we can see what that looks like. So I'm just gonna lift that foot up and you can see what that looks like. And actually I'll just pull this all the way out. But before I do that, I'm gonna have to turn the hand wheel until this needle comes up and kind of reaches its pinnacle. And then you can feel it release and then it's easy to pull. So here we don't see any of the blue on the top and on the bottom, we don't see any of the purple on the bottom. So that's perfect. And then we can just snip this off. So we'll start again with our tails. We want to leave those tails on there. Pull these to the back. 
And now I'm going to show you how to do the lock stitch in the beginning. So we're going to drop this down again. We're going to go forwards a little bit. Just make sure these tails don't pull in. So we'll go forward. And now I'm going to pull down on this reverse lever over here, holding it down, go backwards, and now our stitches are nicely locked in. You can go faster when you're comfortable with that. And then when you're done, you also just want to put the lock stitches at the other side, like that. Now let's say you wanted to try a zigzag stitch. The way you would do that is right up here. We're going to move you to the zigzag setting and we'll move this to a medium wide zigzag. And we'll leave our stitch length at two. And now when we sew, you can see that needle jumping back and forth. And, and it's making a zigzag pattern in our fabric. So that can be useful because it adds a little stretch, a little stretchability. So if you're going around the hem of some pants that are stretchy and you want to maintain that, then the zigzag still lets that material stretch a little bit. There aren't too many safety considerations when it comes to the sewing machine, except for the really big obvious one, which is that you don't want to sew into your finger. So you should never have your finger under the needle especially when the machine is on. So you want to have your hand to the back to help feed it through or your hand in the front, uh, but never under the needle. Something else I'll point out is right over here are little markings that you can use to make sure to maintain a consistent distance from your edge. So here you can see that it, it's measured in eighths. So they're not really normal fractions, but it goes one through six eighths just three quarters of an inch and millimeters down at the bottom. So you can line your fabric up with the edge of that and then try to keep that same distance as you're sewing. So then when you're done with the, with your bit of sewing here, what you do is again, you just turn the hand wheel always forwards and it looks like it's already sort of gone over that peak. We're gonna lift this handle in the back so we can pull this out nicely. Snip this off so we still have our tails. And when you're done sewing, make sure to clean up all your little bits of snipped off thread and fabric and whatever else you have. Put your extra bobbins away and thread. Any other accessories like these scissors back in a little box. You wanna turn the machine off and then put the cover back over the machine. And that's the basics of how to use the Neki sewing machine here at Makehaven. Thanks for watching.